Let's look at one of the most successful digital companies, uh, one of the most valuable companies in the history of humankind, Amazon. So Amazon uh, has several things uh, it deals with. It deals with, it has consumers, clients, it has goods that it sells, uh, it has shopping habits, it has a logistical supply chain and delivery chain. And basically what Amazon does, it brings all of these things together. So these are information processes here. Um, so traditionally, there are different databases and it connects them into one thing. That is what retailing is. And then it creates actually a digital representation of each one of them. So a digital twin, you might say. So Amazon has a digital copy of you, like a little digital voodoo doll that it can experiment with and train its recommender algorithms with and see what they like of, of your shopping habits. It has a digital representation of that. It has a digital twin of all the products that it's you know shipping through its platform and how they are being shipped. If they're shipped by FedEx or by Amazon Prime, that's a different question. And then all of these digital representations of reality are then put together. And you can think about it really creates um, a digital platform. That's why we also talk about the platform economy. And then once you have all this information up there on this platform, you can use this empirical evidence to do your machine learning and you do theoretical simulations on it, and we will have to talk much more about that, how that works, both the machine learning, the artificial intelligence, and the theoretical simulations. And then you can optimize it. You can optimize, well, these processes that are involved there, the digital copies of it, actually, the digital twin of the retail sector that it has in order then to optimize what's going on in the real world. So, so that how that works. And okay, this is an example from the secondary sector of the economy, goods. It also works the same for services. Let's look at the tertiary sector. Uh, let's look at Spotify. Spotify basically has a digital representation of the music sector. Again, it has a digital twin of the listeners, the, the consumers of the music habits. And well, here it's royalties and different music genres and so forth. Now, Spotify does not necessarily own the music, same as Amazon does not necessarily own the products that it buys and sells, that it trades. The music in this case is owned by, for example, by other companies, by much older companies, for example, by Sony Music. Sony Music owns what is maybe the most lucrative song in the history, I don't know, <laughs> happy birthday to you. So anytime happy birthday to you is playing somewhere, you know, it makes cha-ching, not in Spotify's pocket, it makes cha-ching first of all in Sony Music's pocket because Sony Music owns the song. Same as Amazon, um, other companies might own the products that are sold on Amazon. And while it's very lucrative to own something still, be it a song or be it a product, and Sony Music made $8 billion in that year, you know, Spotify's made $12 billion. So this is a new generation of companies. So Sony Music is from the 1920s and Spotify is from the, 20, from the 2010s uh, that basically they don't necessarily own the goods and services themselves. They just, they live up here. So Spotify just lives up here. Uh, it's a company that owns a digital copy of music tastes and of characteristics of music. These companies, they basically, they live up here and not necessarily need to live down here. Uber does not own the taxis. Amazon does not own the products. Amazon now starts to produce products because it knows so much about the production process that it produces its own batteries, you know? But Spotify does not necessarily own the music. What they own is the digital representation of it, a digital twin of it that works up here. And here they do their machine learning, they study it, they do their simulations. We talk more about how that will work. And there's an entire array of companies that basically does that. Airbnb has more beds than the Hyatt and the Sheraton combined but it doesn't own the beds. It doesn't even own the bed sheets. Now there is still value in owning a bed. There's also value in washing sheets. Now the value produced by Airbnb is the knowledge of the hotel, of the hospitality industry in that sense. Same for Netflix. Oh man, here in California and Hollywood, 
Hollywood have been laughing about that. Like who wants to kick Holly, the old powerful Hollywood off the throne? And now they're all in line trying to get on <laughs> Netflix. Now Netflix basically started out here. It does not necessarily own the content, the movies, the series. Now Netflix started to produce content and series because it, it knows so much about what people want. It can produce series that really interest people. But not necessarily. Netflix basically, mainly, traditionally, has lived up here and takes the content from others and then just is running it. So, And there are many other examples of other companies that basically do that. So if you're not quick enough, the creative destruction, and that's a technical term, Schumpeter's creative destruction, we talk more about that at the end of the specialization in some other sessions when we talk about social evolution. The creative destruction will basically leave you behind. And it still creates value to have physical products and to do that, transform them energetically, efficiently in an industrial sense. But the aggregate value that's now put on top lives up here. It has to do with the information and knowledge embedded, implied in these processes. And these processes have always been there. And we do that in two steps. So basically, if you go from the bottom up, we first of all bring all the data, all the information together, all the communication, we communicate all the information, different databases together. We talk, we call that the digitization and later the digitalization of that process. And then so once we have it up down, uh, once we algorithmize it, then we algorithmify these processes back down. And that's what we will talk about in the next one.